Hey y'all, bienvenidos. Welcome to my kitchen. As we're nearing the end of our celebration for Dia de los Muertos at CC called Muertitos Fest, we thought it would be nice to end this time frame with some great holiday recipes as we near uh, um, Christmas time and holidays that are important culturally to Mexican Americans. So today I'm going to be sharing with you a recipe for um, polvorones or pan de polvo, or also known as Mexican uh, wedding cookies, and some Oaxacan hot chocolate. So join me as we celebrate culture and the holidays, Ceci and Johnny Nojosa style. And I have a great story that I think about all the time when I'm eating a polveron. Polveron is really sort of what I think is that they, they're supposed to burst and dissolve in your mouth, and that's really important. Uh, my family, in particular my dad's family, was from the Rio Grande Valley, McAllen to be specific. My joke is my last name, Hinojosa, is, is hard to pronounce. In addition, you don't find a lot of Hinojosas. Also, people always ask me is, are you a related to Tish Hinojosa or Maria, Maria Hinojosa? And I always say yes, because I feel like as Mexicans, we're all sort of related and part of a big family. Anyway, I remember driving to the Rio Grande Valley and my grandma Antolina would always give us a can of polvorones cookies to take with us uh, back to El Paso, Texas. The idea was that we were supposed to take them back with us and celebrate and enjoy them but they never made it back to El Paso. I grew up with a bunch of brothers and a dad, and probably by the time we were two hours out of the Rio Grande Valley, that tin of cookies were gone. Let me share with you the ingredients on how we're gonna make the polvorones. So these wedding cookies, or polvorones, makes about three dozen. It's a super, super simple recipe that anybody can make, and I hope you uh, give it a shot. You'll find the recipe and the ingredients and how to make them at the end of this video in addition to the Oaxacan hot chocolate recipe. So the ingredients are pretty simple. It's one cup of butter softened, half a cup of powdered or granular sugar, a teaspoon of vanilla and a quarter teaspoon of salt, two and a quarter cups of sifted flour, and three quarters cups of ground pecans. Uh, you can use, again, sugar and cinnamon or powdered sugar to roll the cookies in after being made. And just like magic, you have polvorones. So, we're going to make some Oaxacan hot chocolate, because what goes better with polvorones than Oaxacan hot chocolate? There's different ways to make it, and I'm going to give you my recipe, but that you can certainly look at other options. One of the things, uh, one of my favorite places to go is Oaxaca and the Valles de Oaxaca. Uh, it's some places that I miss and I'm looking forward to, to go to after this pandemic is over. Mexico is gonna be my first place in particular, Mexico City. So, a couple of things about hot chocolate. So there's different brands that you can use. I'm gonna share with you the brand to be able to use is Mayordomo. You'll find it really around every corner in Oaxaca City. There's also my favorite, La Soledad, but I don't have any right now, obviously, because I, I've used it mostly and I haven't been to Oaxaca. So there's also um, other kinds of chocolates you can find in Mexican markets or even your grocery store. Ibarras is actually made in Jalisco and is a great chocolate. And then the other one is Abuelita. But here's the deal. I wouldn't use Abuelita. It wasn't made by your Abuelita. It's made by a big corporation and there's better chocolates that you can find at your local mercado or grocery store. The other thing that's really important is to use the right pot, but really any pot will do. I have a beautiful Oaxacan hot chocolate uh, frother that I'll show you that comes from Astompa. In addition, Molinillos, the frothers are really, really important to be able to use. I have a huge collection of them. Uh, I have some beautiful pieces that I don't actually use made by Jacobo Angeles from San Martín Tilcajete. He's known, he and his wife and his 
Thayer is known for the amazing alebrijes that they make in Oaxaca. And then I have this beautiful one that actually has my name that I also uh, don't use just because it's an important sort of sentimental piece that my wife had made for me. So let's get started on making Oaxacan hot chocolate. So once you've mixed the milk or the water and the hot chocolate on the stove and get it nice and hot, what you want to do is put it into a container and then you want to take your molinillo and you want to create those froth. And the way that you do that is you just work to vigorously blend the frother in the container. And the more vigorous you do this, the more froth you get. And so this is one of the things that's really important to Mexican hot chocolate or Oaxacan hot chocolate. It's really about the froth. It's really about that creaminess and that texture on the very top of the cup that makes it extra special. So at this point, what I'm gonna do is pour it into a cup and hopefully, We've got some froth or espuma. There you go. So again, this is a cup that you'll normally find in the mercados all through Oaxaca. And then the idea is, is that you take this and you drink to good fortune and good luck. So on behalf of Ceci, on behalf of myself and the Hinojosa family, I wanna wish you all happy holidays. I want to wish you a Feliz Navidad, and I want you to also have a wonderful Merry Christmas. Remember to be cautious, stay safe, and take care of yourselves, and we'll see you all in person soon.